it's a me, Mario. Um, just kidding, pretend I didn't. <laughs> pretend I didn't do that. What's up, nerds? It is time for February's monthly unboxing video. I'm always super excited to make because I love opening packages. <laughs> it's basic of me, but you know, I don't know what some of these look like and it's very exciting. Let's just get into it. So first up, I have my book of the month. There's just one book in here. Okay, we've got our bookmark. Was it something I read? That's pretty cute. Submitted by Alyssa A. from Palmyra, Virginia. Member since 2022. Good, good job. Good job, Alyssa. Pippin, you want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. Oh, you got to... He's got to monitor her every movement. So the book I got this month is one that I was already going to read. So it was exciting that I get to have a nice little hardcover version of it instead of waiting on my library like a good little book, non-book buyer. And that is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. So this is a book that I've had on my radar specifically ever since two of my friends have read it. One of them is my friend Rochelle from Cannibal Read and the other is Gretchen, who I've known from forever, <laughs> but you guys might know her from Instagram. She is Eating Reading, which is a lovely account that is full of food and books and book reviews. And Gretchen's awesome. You should give her a follow. Anyway, so this is Ready or Not. This is a surprise pregnancy book, which I know isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoy, I very much enjoy it when it's done well, particularly since it's something I will never experience. And then obviously like, I think this is her best friend's brother or something like that. And she falls in love with him while she's having another dude's baby after a one night stand. But I've heard that it has like really good found family vibes and it's like a cozy read. And this cover is certainly giving cozy and I love a good found family. So yeah, I'm excited to give this one a shot. So now let's do Aardvark. So I got, a, for the first time in like months and months and months, like a really long time, I actually got two books. One was a bit of an impulse purchase, but my impulse has since been rewarded since I've seen several people giving it really stellar reviews. Okay, so first we've got the bookmark, which I, I got two because I have two books. That's cute how they do that. And it says, please use in lieu of an old birthday or business card. So not as good as the bandage from last time. And it's uh, purple and orange. And then this week's challenge. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like text messages. I don't, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I still have yet to do one of these, by the way. Oh, that's cute. That's the audiobooks, I think. I think. I don't know. I'll look into this later. You guys don't need to watch me figure it out. Okay, so the first book I've got in here is A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. So this is the author's, is it her second book or is it just the second book of hers since, no, it's not her second book. She's written other books. But she hit it big with Seven Days in June, which is a book I never read because I wasn't super interested in it. I'm not sure I remember why. Pippin, don't, don't, don't my book. That's my book. That's not your book. I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just didn't call out to me, but this one seems like it would be more, up my alley. I'm sure I would like that one if I read it, but <laughs> the summary just, you know, just isn't called me. You guys know, you guys know. But this one sounds really magical and like kind of not whimsical because it's got more of a darker, serious vibe, but like almost whimsical, like a nighttime whimsy kind of a, a feeling. I don't know. Does that even make sense? Whatever. I'm going to give this one a shot. It's a, it's a romance. It's set in Harlem and Ricky Wilde is the main character. That's, that's what I got. This one... <laughs> I don't know. It just looked really fun and I love the cover even though the only thing I've ever read from this author is Star Wars fan fiction aka Extended Universe books and that's Christopher Golden. Wait I read a Buffy thing from him too I think. He, he, he writes in other people's IP but this is his book and I haven't read any of his books before and that's The House of Last Resort. So this is a haunted house novel that takes place in Italy and that's pretty much all I know. I got this for two reasons. One, I'm loving horror lately and I want to try more of it and see what, what my tastes are like. And two, stupid battery. Uh, two, look at this. I just love that. It's so good. It's a cover buy. It's, it's a cover buy. So I don't know. And the Italy, the Italy summary sounds really good. There was something about it specifically that really called to me. Dude, don't lick my book. Ah, gross. Okay, that's why. That's, I remember now. So I just read the summary. So this is, an American couple buys this 
for really, really dirt cheap. I think for some ridiculous amount of money. I can't remember. And nobody supports them in doing this. And come to find out that the, the, the Catholic Church, like the Roman Catholic Church, used to own this house for decades. And some probably weird stuff happened there. So that's the setup. So we'll see how I like it. If anything, it'll be fun to have this in my house <laughs> until I read it because it's so pretty. I am shallow. I'm not gonna sing shallow. So these are the ones I don't know what they look like. So I guess Fairy Loot is up first. So this is the Fairy Loot adult subscription. Uh, these are my enemy. This is the theme, Star Chosen. I'll turn it around if you wanna be spoiled. I already know what the book is. Baggy. Okay, so this is upside down, I think. That's opposite. Oh, we got cover letter. I assume that's the main character. Oh, that's pretty. So we've got The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. I like this cover a lot better than the other cover. I don't know, there's something about the other cover that feels like really generic to me. I'll go ahead and put it here for you to look. I'll get it out of the way. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the the, the choice here to have this like sticker font. It looks like stickers to me, but the actual cover itself, like with this snowy village and the mountain and the moon and the sunset and like the village down here, I love that. It says, curses are made to be broken. And then we've got digitally sprayed edges the whole way around. That's a little tower, which I really enjoy. I do not know what this is about, by the way. I read the summary and said, yeah, that sounds interesting. I'll get it. And then I promptly forgot. So we're gonna find out in just a second. But we've got a cloth bound. Yes, they're doing these more and I'm so appreciative of it. And then we've got some silver foiling on the outside. It looks like a mountain and a river or a valley of some sort. Oh, and then we've got the character art on the inside and it is signed by the author, but I think it's just a digital, yeah, it's a digital signature, which is fine. I don't really care about signatures. And then on this side, I presume this is the love interest because I think this is a fantasy romance or at least it, it's a fantasy with romance in it. What's the difference in, anymore these days? It's smut, okay. So then we've got that, and then I think there's all like artwork on the inside. Oh yeah, there is. So this is a different colorway of the original cover, which again, I am not a big fan of. So I will not be using it. Although I like those colors better than the original colors. All right, that's pretty. Uh, let's look at the summary. I like when they do like entirely new covers. Okay, so here's the summary. For centuries, Everly's have seen their brightest and best disappear, taken as punishment for a crime no one remembers, for a purpose no one understands. Their tormentor is a woman named Penelope, who never ages, never grows sick, and never forgives a debt. Ten years ago, Violet Everly's mother left to break the curse and never returned. Now Violet must find her mother or she will be taken in her place. Okay, so it's a hunt to find a mother and break a curse. That sounds like something I'll be interested in. We'll see how I actually like it though in practice. Next up is Illumicrate. So this book I'm actually really excited about. I would have read it no matter if it was in a subscription box or not because it combines two things that I love. And when you put two things together that I love, like why wouldn't I love that even more? Which, you know, past mashups of this genre have worked really well for me. So that's not just like a thing that I'm saying. So I should tell you what it is, which is <laughs> The Voyage of the Damned, or just Voyage of the Damned, I guess. So this is pretty much the original cover. It's just a different color slightly. I'll put the original here. This is more green. That's blue, and it's more shiny, I think. On the back, it says, we can get murdered tomorrow. Tonight, we party, <laughs> which that doesn't bode well, actually. I don't like when fantasy worlds use modern day terminology. That, that's a little bit. That's a little bit worrisome, not gonna lie. Pippin, would you stop? But this is a fantasy and it's a murder mystery, in case you were wondering what the two genres were that I was talking about. But this is really thick, so presumably there's a lot of fantasy in here. I like those edges, those are really cool. 
And then the top is just blue and bottom is blue or green or whatever that color is. Then we've got, oh, I like the inside. And again, it's cloth bound. Yes, they're learning. That fish dragon thing or whatever it is. Is it a skull? Is this, what is it? I don't know what it is. Is it a boat? I, who knows? I guess we'll find out. That's what it looks like there. Then it's got uh, this cute little map of the boat or schematics of the boat blueprint cute little blueprint of the boat i don't know and then a, a legend down below which that's kind of helpful but also like <laughs> these are just empty rooms and it says that they're all different kinds of rooms i feel like we should maybe have that illustrated but whatever i'm just nitpicking uh does it look the same on the other side yep it does it looks the same it's signed with that it's not a legend that's not a word that's not a name that's this is a book about and it's on a boat by the way it's a fantasy murder mystery on a boat 12 magical blessings 12 days at sea one chance to stop a killer and save the world for a thousand years concordia has maintained peace between its provinces to mark this incredible feat the emperor's ship embarks upon a 12-day voyage to the sacred goddess's mountain aboard are the heirs of the 12 provinces of concordia each graced with a unique and secret magical ability known as a blessing, except one, Ganymedes Pacero, class clown, slacker, and all-around disappointment. When a beloved heir is murdered, everyone is a suspect. Stuck at sea and surrounded by powerful people without a blessing to protect him, odds of survival are slim. And then it keeps going. Uh, yeah, that sounds really fun. Now, if the style and the execution match up, I'll have a great time. If it doesn't, it will be sad. So this is the one I'm actually the most excited about, which is why I put it on the bottom. This is the Evernight, Evernight quarterly box, which is Fairy Loot's horror subscription. And so far they have given me, well, one book that I liked physically. I haven't read any of them yet. And then two stunning books. So I'm really excited to see what they can do here. Plus, I read one of these author, her previous young adult horror book and gave it five stars and it was so good. So we're looking at, here's the theme and then there's the spoiler. Okay. Okay. Here. Oh, it's little. Comes in. Bubble wrap. I'm going to save that to send people books from Pango. Ooh, pretty. I like that a lot. Okay, so this is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. So the book that I read from her previously was, uh, shoot, what's it called? Why can I never remember things when I'm supposed to be remembering? Oh, House of Hollow was her previous book. So this is the spine. Ooh, that's really, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's a skeleton. That's creepy. And it's making, it's doing this. Here, this isn't like the most stunning I've ever seen, but like the vibes are really good. We've got this house on the back, creepy foggy wood. Ooh, that's cool. Looks like a old book and it says Necromantea, which I assume has something to do with the plot. That's the back. The top's just green, so is the bottom. And the inside, this, this is tiny. Inside, a bunch of creepy stuff it looks like from textbooks or Books of Magic and Lore or something like that. And it's signed. What's it got on the back? Oh, it's the same thing on the back. So yeah, that's cute. I like it. It's it's a little bit more subtle than the last one, which is still my all-time favorite with the freaky looking three-headed cat, but it's still pretty good. So what's this one about? All right, five women are dead. The killer leaves no fingerprints, no DNA. Police are utterly stumped. In a world where only women can use magic and the men who know about it seek to eradicate them, three damaged young women, one cursed, one hunted, one out for revenge, will team up to track down and take out a brutal supernatural killer. Jude Wolf, Zara Jones, and Emmer Byrne. So I'm not gonna read the rest of it, but that sounds awesome. It's so little. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I've embiggened. Yeah, I really like that. That's cool. Here's the original cover, by the way. Pip and don't, I need to send that out. You can't do that. Here, play with it. Play with it. So let me get these. Not a huge stack this month. So these are the books. Actually a lot of purples and pinks going on here and then the outlier on top there. And then on the other side, I think it's not a, it's nothing exciting on this side really. There we go, the top three. So yeah, that's what I got for you guys. 
This is a, been a very, well, it's 20 minutes actually. I was gonna say it's been a very short uh, unboxing, but there we go. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I'm gonna go edit this and get it up for you real quick. And then I'm gonna sit here and um, pet my pretty new books slash inventory them and put them into my spreadsheets and put them on the shelves and stuff. So, but also really petting them, I will, I'll do that. So please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps my channel to grow. I'm like a third of the way to be, being able to monetize. So anything helps. I mean, I don't expect to like make much money at all off of this channel in the future, just to be clear. But it would still be nice to get a look like a coffee here or there or something, who knows. I, I don't actually know, I haven't looked into it at all, but it feels like a nice goal to have, you know, like a thousand subscribers, but which by the way, you have to have a thousand subscribers to be able to monetize. So if you are planning to read any of these, let me know, let me know which one you like the best, like which edition you like the best, if any of them, <laughs> or if, if any of these like you don't wanna read cause they look, like my friend Miriam refuses to read pregnancy in books, so she will not be reading Ready or Not. <laughs> Hi, Miriam. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, leave a cherry blossom for the invocations. And I don't know why I just picked cherry blossom because this is not set in Japan, but her other book, House of Hollow, had lots of flower horror in it, like Flora doing creepy things. And the cherry blossom is the only flower that I know is in definitely an emoji. So please leave me a cherry blossom emoji and subscribe if you want to like. God, I hate ending these. I hate ending videos. Okay. Love you. Bye.